on everybody welcome to another episode of the mac lessons radio show and i'm your gracious host my name is mr Tariq elite glad to have everybody tuning back into the show i am broadcasting live right now down in birmingham alabama just handling a little business visiting family doing the whole shebang bang i'm gonna drive over to atlanta tomorrow I'm gonna check out some theaters over there because i'm bringing my lecture tour back to atlanta one more again. Got to give a shout out to everybody out there in D.C. What's up, D.C.? Washington, D.C. came out and represented last week. We had a ball spitting hot fire out there in Washington, D.C. A lot of love in D.C., man. The event was sold out. It became standing room only at a point. Man, the D.C. players came out looking good, man. The players came out suited and booted. So many well-to-do, good-looking black folks out there in D.C., man. Brothers came in, brothers were doctors, lawyers, real estate guys, financial consultants. There were a lot of upscale brothers came out and represented the game last week in Washington, D.C. So I got a lot of love for Washington, D.C., man. I had a ball out there in D.C. D.C. is off the chain. Think about D.C., man. D.C. is funny, man, because... In D.C., every block has a whole different type of demographic. You walk down the street in D.C., one block is real hood. Then the next block is a bunch of politicians. Then the next block is a bunch of meth heads. Then the very next block is a bunch of crackheads. Then the very next block is a bunch of moist dudes. And when I say it's a whole level of moist in D.C., I got love for D.C., but boy, I saw some shit that was beyond moist. I saw some dripping wet shit down in D.C., man. Let me put on some Mackin' music real quick. Hold on. I saw me some real dripping wet type shit. There was some dudes... <laughs> I saw a motherfucker in D.C. with a perm. A dude had on a white beater and a perm and some Nicki Minaj bangs. I said, damn, player? But hey, I got a lot of love for D.C., man. D.C. represented. There are some players out there in D.C., and they came out and represented. So I got a lot of love for my D.C. folks. Don't forget to check out MacLessons.com to check out the pay-per-view specials. A lot of people want me to come to their cities because the tour is off the hook. The next cities that are on the menu is definitely Atlanta. Like I said, I'm going to be looking for venues in Atlanta tomorrow, and I'm going to be casing Atlanta out, feeling out the vibe since I'm down here. Also, we're going to hit up Miami. We're going to hit up Detroit. Where else are we going to go? I know I'm going to be in St. Louis, I think, in September. There's some promoters handling that. So I keep you guys posted on that. So I might even go to Toronto, Can Toronto Canada. I might even go to London, England. A lot of my, my British players want me to come over there and spit games. So all my, my English players, give me a holler. If you guys want me to come to your city, all you promoters, all you people at these schools, if you want some hot fire, all you people at the Essence Festival, because the people from Essence, they always want me to come to do the thing. So if you guys are talking right and we can make this thing really, really bubble like it's supposed to bubble, y'all give me a holler. If you know some folks at the Essence Festival that's coming up this summer, hit me up at info at TariqElite.com. That's info at TariqElite.com. 
All right, now today is gonna be a quick show. I'm just gonna spit some real quick hot fire because my whole biological time clock is off right now. I've been in about four or five different time zones in the last week. I went to DC, went back to LA, then flew right back out here to the south and I'm, I'm all over the place. I'm going to Hawaii next week. So I'm all over the hemisphere. But what I wanna talk about today, I wanna talk about undercover freaks. That's today's topic on the Mac Lessons Radio Show. I want to talk about how to spot, how to identify undercover freaks. Girls who are low-key sluts. Girls who are low-key freaky-deaky. Girls who are low-key undercover promiscuous. Because a lot of cats don't know how to spot this. See, usually when cats see females at the spot or go, go to clubs, they go for the girl who's dressed the most stank. When guys go out to clubs, they go out to the girl, or they go up to the girl, or they start sweating the girl with the the booty shorts on. They start sweating the girl with her titties out, with the cleavage all up to her neck. You sweat the girl with the camel toe hanging out. And then when you sweat these girls and you try to spit game at them, you're not really getting that kind of rhythm. And I think I've talked about this before. These are attention sluts. These are attention whores. And I've done many shows about attention whores. A lot of attention whores like that aren't giving up on nothing. This is why they can justify dressing real stank and sleazy. Because in their mind, they're like, well, I'm not doing anything. I'm just dressing the way I like to dress. So the thing is, fellas, you have to know how to identify the undercover freaks. And I'm going to talk about three types of undercover freaks in particular today because there's many different types but I want to talk about the three main types of undercover freaks that you guys can really peep game about and church girls are not one of them see that's old game I've talked about church girls in my book The Art of Mackin you guys can check out the 10 year anniversary edition of The Art of Mackin at Amazon.com or BarnesandNoble.com But everybody should know about how the the church girls are undercover freaks. The girls that have to go to church all the time or the preacher's daughter. That's old game. I'm not going to lace you with old game. You can go get my books for that. But there's other types of undercover freaks that you need to become aware of. Number one, the first type of undercover freak, girls who have a particularly freakish nature, a freakish disposition that a lot of people don't expect are military girls that's number one and when i say military girls i'm not talking about the military girls that are studdish there's some girls get into the military because they want to do a masculine job i'm not talking about them they like pussy more than you do which ain't nothing wrong with that i have a large lesbian audience i love my lesbians i love my studs much love to you i love y'all For Christmas, I'll send y'all some Alicia Keys CDs because, you know, studs love Alicia Keys. That's their idol. But I digress. But like I said, military girls, the straight military girls, the straight girls, a lot of girls go into the military to get a certain level of discipline. See, a lot of women who are forced to have discipline They become more rebellious. See, the thing is, women, and I want you guys to really understand women. Women have a rebellious nature. Women are rebellious by nature. It goes back to the story of Adam and Eve. The story of Adam and Eve was a story about female rebelliousness. The female rebelling against male authority. When a woman is rebellious, rebellion is a woman's low-level way of getting some sense of power. And everybody wants a sense of power. Some people can earn it in certain ways. Some people get it by any means necessary or they get it the easy way. And for women, the easiest way for a woman, because a woman can't be physically rebellious, like a man can be rebellious by being reckless. He can be a bully. He can destroy certain things physically. A woman doesn't have that kind of power to be rebellious. So a lot of women are rebellious with their mouthpiece or with their actions or with their character. 
A lot of women will make slick comments in order to be rebellious. A lot of women will have this mentality, well, I can do whatever I want. I'll agree to this, but I'm gonna do whatever I want anyway, just for the sake of being rebellious. See, women have a real strong rebellious nature. And a lot of women end up being slutty out of rebelliousness because a lot of women are told by society that you have to conduct yourself a certain way, sexually. So a lot of women have a sluttish disposition as a way of rebelling against society. Now some women feel like they can't help this. So a lot of women will seek disciplinary circumstances. They'll join the military. A lot of women, and I'm saying this from experience people, a lot of women that I've known that have been stone cold freaks have been in the Air Force or the, the Army or something. I know a lot of girls who've done porn who, who has been in the military before. So do not sleep on a girl when she says that she's in the military. See, a lot of times when dudes meet women and they say, well, I'm in the, I'm in the Air Force, a lot of guys might think, well, damn, she's, she's upscale, she's too disciplined to give that ass up. When they say they from the Air Force, the light bulb should go on in your head, player. That's a green light right there, dude. Trust me, them Air Force girls, they flying more than planes. They flying their mouths around missiles. And the missiles is your dick. Do not sleep on the military girls, fellas. Now, the second type of freaky young lady are school teachers. I've talked about this in one of my books. I think I talked about that briefly, very briefly in The Art of Mackin. But school teachers, that's an occupation with a lot of freaky women. And I've been knowing this for the last 20 years. I've been dealing with school teachers. They are some of the biggest freaks. Again, being a school teacher, that type of job forces women to have a disciplinary mentality at all times. To be a school teacher, a woman has to conduct herself a certain way on and off campus. The job requires them to have a, an upscale character at all times. And the thing is, a job like that doesn't pay a whole hell of a lot. So there's a lot of frustration that goes into that. A woman has to suppress her uh, rebellious nature for really not a lot of money. And I know a lot of school teachers that are undercover hookers who sell pussy on the side. I mean, me and my partners, we used to run after our spots in L.A. back in the day, and a lot of school teachers in the daytime would come up in there and try to make them a little change at night. So a lot of school teachers be on that freak shit, man. They have to be Miss Goody Two-Shoes during the day. And again, that rebellious nature that women have, being a school teacher, it's suppressed deeper and deeper and deeper. And when something is really suppressed for a long time, when it comes out, it comes out in a major way. When you have to suppress what you really, really want to do, and you're forced to suppress that, when it comes out, it goes haywire. That's why teachers always get caught up in these scandals. You notice there's always a school teacher getting caught fucking one of her students. Every time you turn on the news, there's a fine one, too. It's always some fine teacher. It's not like them old, dusty teachers we had back in the day. Them old, golden girls looking teachers. The teachers now are fine than a motherfucker. And the disciplinary actions are, are stricter these days. There's, there's more of a code of conduct than back in the day. So these women really have to suppress that rebellious nature. And these fine-ass teachers... The slut is bubbling up out of them. You catch them with a 14-year-old student almost every other week. That's because a lot of cats, man, a lot of dudes, when they hear that a woman is a school teacher, they're scared to spit game at her. A lot of dudes, when they hear that a woman is a school teacher, they feel like, okay, she must be a, she might be a little crass. She might not give me any play when they hear school teacher. Boy, you better holler at them school teachers, player. Them school teachers are stone freaks. Do not sleep on them school teachers. You feel me? Now, last but not least, 
another kind of freak, undercover freak, that a lot of cats sleep on are skinny girls. I talked about that briefly on the last show. A lot of you players be sleeping on the bony girls. As a matter of fact, it was a bony girl called up, I think in my Ustream show, one of my shows, a, a girl called up. She was like, hey, I live in Atlanta. I'm a, I'm a thin girl. How can a thin girl like me get my foot in the door? The guys ain't checking for me. Go check out one of my Ustream shows. A girl just called with that. A lot of cats want the thick girls. And that's understandable. There's nothing wrong with wanting a girl with, you know, ass titties and all that stuff. There's nothing wrong with that. But don't sleep on the bony girls. Them bony motherfuckers know how to throw that pussy. Because, see, the thick girls, all they have to do when you get in the bedroom with them, all they have to do is just lay there and be thick. And a lot of those, quote unquote, thick girls end up becoming lazy fucks. They lay there and just really don't do anything. Their thickness is a gift to you in their minds. That's why a lot of these thick girls end up getting fat. Because they feel like they don't have to put in no work. It's them bony motherfuckers. Let me tell you something. The best, some of the best pussy I done had in my life was from, them, from one of them little old 98 pound wearing broads. Them little bony ones know how to throw it because they have to compensate for not being thick. So they got to put in a little extra work. Y'all think about it, fellas. All my players. If you're a player out there, I'm talking to my players out there. Think about some of the best sex you done had, players. I'm talking about my players that got a few notches on their belts. Think about some of the best sex you had. I can almost guarantee you it was from one of them little bony chicks or one of those slender chicks. And if she's a slim chick with a little bubble on them, oh, you can't beat that. That's the icing on the cake. I've had me some bony chicks, like bony, just skeleton bodies, like, but with big titties. I like them kind. But don't sleep on the bony girls. Them bony girls learn how to do tricks. They have to do maneuvers. They know how to work that shit. I was with one bony girl one time, years ago. We were in a compromising position, so to speak. We were at the spot, the lights off, clothes off, candles burning. We about to go ahead and do what we supposed to do. She said, hold on for a minute, Flex. I got a CD in my purse. Let me put my CD on. I said, okay. I'm thinking it's some slow jam. She, she really wants to get into some romantic shit. I'm like, all right, let's get your, your CD on. She puts her CD on. It's a, a reggae CD with slow reggae songs. I'm like, okay. So she gets on top of me, inserts the genitalia inside of her. She's doing her thing on top of me. Then this girl rests her hands on my chest and raises up and starts doing the butterfly on my dick. I looked up and said, bumba clot. That was the best feeling, feeling shit I've ever had in my life. Don't sleep on the bony girls, fellas. Them bony girls have tricks up their sleeves. Do you understand what I'm saying? Anyway, y'all, like I said, it's a quick show today. That's been today's episode of the Mac Lessons Radio Show. Um, I think I might do a Ustream tonight or tomorrow in Atlanta. I'm not sure. I might do one tonight. You guys check me out on Twitter at twitter.com slash Tariq Nasheed. If you don't have my Facebook, add me on Facebook at facebook.com slash Tariq elite don't forget to check out maclessons.com and you can add the mac lessons radio show on itunes go to maclessonsradio.com and there's an icon on the page where you can add me on itunes so you can get the shows downloaded automatically to your your ipod or whatever you do all right y'all that's been today's episode of mac lessons radio show i will holler at you next week peace